Hello, and welcome to Greatest Games Never Played, a Lantern Light Studios production. I'm Alex Fitzsimmons, and joined, as always, by my co-host, Reno Del Moro. What's going on, Fitzy? Not too much. How you doing? Oh, yeah. The cream always rises to the top, Alex. And this episode's got me ready to boil over. Yeah. You're going to run out of these impressions eventually. I don't want to hear any repeats from you. That's for sure. Listen, a retread macho man, always worth it. But remember, uh, <laughs> I got other ones. I mean, our, you know, Anthony, our producer, has discovered another one that he likes that I do. So uh, I'll try to keep them coming. But you might be right. I, I might have to give up eventually. <laughs> Just Can't say hello. Wait. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> hello. <laughs> All right. So here on Greatest Games Never Played, the premise of our, uh, of our show here is that we're going to be taking a look at pivotal moments in sports history and trying to debate and, and discuss them and analyze and decide what would have happened had those gone uh, those moments gone a different way. So without further ado, we're going to be getting our topic from the one and only Taro Sujimoto. Since the dawn of competition, people have often sought to find an advantage over their opponents. Athletes discovered the benefits of performance-enhancing drugs to be too alluring to turn down, and sporting events became riddled with the use of PEDs throughout the decades. In 1928, the International Association of Athletics Federation was formed to ban performance-enhancing drugs. It would be the beginning of a long and often futile fight against the cheating in sports. And it would give birth to other large governing bodies, such as the World Anti-Doping Agency and the U.S. ADA, all attempting to enforce and prevent cheating through more stringent testing. The integrity and fairness of many leagues have been called into question as testing agencies can't keep up with the ever-changing designer drugs and the lengths at which athletes are willing to go in order to mask their drug use. Some of the greatest athletes of all time have now had their legacies and reputations tarnished and destroyed after being caught. Even mere speculation or rumors has undone the accomplishments of some of the legends of their games. But what if anti-doping agencies never sought to ban athletes from putting PEDs in their bodies? Imagine a world where drug testing for athletes is non-existent, where the playing field is leveled by allowing each athlete to weigh the risks and to make the choices for themselves, regardless of the harm they may cause to their own bodies. What if PEDs were never banned in sports? Oh, man. All right. So in this scenario here, we got the anti-doping committees and the law deciding they're never going to get involved in preventing prevent, uh, preventing PEDs in sports. Um, you know me. Uh, I kind of like the uh, you ain't cheating, you ain't trying uh, mantra. But there's a lot to unpack here. Um, what, what, what do you say we get right into the, what, the, what the PEDs are and kind of just go over the basics of this before we even get into uh, this scenario? Yeah, you're not kidding about that. You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I mean, and there's many ways to cheat, buddy, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, in this case, we're talking about the performance enhancing drugs, the seven most commonly used ones to uh, try to run through it quick. And uh, by the way, again, apologies to all the doctors, uh, physicians, linguists out there. I'm going to butcher the shit out of a lot of these fucking names. I and, don't uh, doubt that. Yeah, I'm going to sound like an I idiot, don't. and I apologize. <laughs> uh, that's why I don't take them. Uh, so I don't have to that's pronounce That's the reason them. you don't take them? It's yeah, well, you know, them. many different reasons. But, you know, I, I can't get up and pronounce them, so I even try. So. But, <laughs> but like, Scott, I, I, would, I would take them, but I don't know how to ask for them. I'm, I'm just afraid I'm going to look like an idiot. Yeah, if I knew how to say the word, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I might I might do it, but no. Um, so you got, you know, your classic anabolic steroids. Um, you know, basically anabolic steroids increase the testosterone produced in your body, making muscles bigger, helping the body recover from the workouts more quickly, uh, could be taken pill, injected topical treatment. There's exogenous steroids, which are synthetic and there's endogenous steroids, which are naturally. Oh boy. Someone did the research. Yeah. They're naturally occurring substances allows metabolic change in your body. Um, a big example of that is, uh, uh, here's my first word, the butcher. 
tetrahydrogestrinone, uh, referred to as THD, THG. Or, 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 or the, I, know, I know this one, the clear. Or, oh, yeah. Who made it famous? Do you know? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Bonds. No, Marion uh-huh. Jones, actually. Um, in the 2000 Olympics, she didn't admit to it till later, but yeah, she, uh, she made the clear famous in the 2000 Olympics. Then you got Andro or Andro Stenadion or whatever. Try it again. I, I, I want to hear it again. <laughs> and, <laughs> Andro Stenadion. <laughs> Andro, I, I, I always hear it as Andro stat, but, uh, yeah, that allows athletes to train harder and recover quicker as well from strenuous workouts. Um, those Fair. risks you see. What's famous up? famous for who? Oh, uh, Mark McGuire. There we go. Remember, he, they found the pills in his uh, locker in 98, and he was like, oh, yeah, I take them. But at the time, they weren't illegal. Um, yeah, interesting stat about that, too. I, I read through, through this right here. was uh, After he came out and you know, he was using it, they said that they, uh, they estimate uh, between and high school seniors and, and the athletes, something like 8% of high school seniors – we're taking Andrew after that, um, after seeing that Mark McGuire was doing it. Yeah, I could totally see that. I was in early portion of college in 2001, and a guy I was in class with, uh, I won't name names. He was a good guy. He changed his life, but uh, he mentioned that he had taken Andrew in high school when he played baseball. And uh, yeah, he did some crazy shit on it. So uh, needless Gotta to say, it. he got off of it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, you see those, you know, the acne, the, the decrease in the sperm production, the, the testicles shrinking and, uh, and, you know, and, and women get more masculine under it. Um, and you mm-hmm. got HGH, there which is. is technically like, I guess it's not considered a steroid, um, because it's more like a growth hormone. I mean, it, it does basically like allow you to retain fluid and build muscle, but a lot of athletes, um, I mean, athletes while they're still doing it, a lot of fighters, a lot of like UFC fighters have used it for recovery. And a lot of pe- athletes and people use it for recovery reasons after um, they're done playing sports too. Hmm. But that, you know, could weaken the heart, joint pain, muscle weakness, stuff like that. This one I'm totally going to butcher. Ethropotin. Try it again. I want to hear it again. Yeah. I like Ethero- that so much the first time. I want a second time. Ethropotin? <laughs> it can't right. be well, right. But... I'm going to call it EPO. EPO, yeah. That's <laughs> what it is for sure. And that's, I should have just or, called it EPO. Or, or EPO, I believe, is what uh, Lance Armstrong was calling it. EPO, yeah. Which is crazy because this is like considered one of the most like dangerous of all of them. I mean, it death, strokes, heart attacks, boom. Like that's, it could all occur from that. It's crazy. I mean, basically, it oxygenates the muscles, you know, oxygen eats the blood more to flow through the muscles and, you know, allows you to considerable have more endurance. Uh, so, so, so it's a form of blood doping. It's, you know, it, the idea is that it, it's going to, like you said, increase the red blood cells. I know that's something you hear in boxing a lot where people do it through blood transfusions. Um, but in this case, it's a drug that does it inside your body without a blood transfusion to just increase your red blood cell count, uh, you know, making it, slower to burn out during physical activity yeah, Which, yeah. Well, but you're right super dangerous uh heart super attacks dangerous. strokes the, all that stuff yeah peptide hormones um are usually the epo and that that could actually be produced synthetically using like basically recumbent dna technology oh boy right? all right let's yeah. keep it moving here before we lose diuretics. Every, everyone <laughs> diuretics i know diuretics basically they change the body's natural wa- uh, water and salt levels um, this is like for a couple of things. You're a lot of times it's used as a masking agent because it helps people pass drug tests because it mm-hmm. like, you pee your ass off basically. They're water pills. Um, yeah, they're basically yeah, and it could lower weight and stuff like that. Um, could be lead to dehydration, exhaustion, heat stroke, all that great stuff. Heart arrhythmia, death, lovely. Mm-hmm. Uh, creatine, um, popular. That's like an over the counter supplement too. You can find that like Gary's World of Wellness. Uh, sorry, Gary's. I don't think you exist anymore, so I don't think I'm going to get sued. Uh, no, uh, no free plugs. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they exist anymore. I'm pretty certain they do. <laughs> but, but creatine, a lot of times found in a powder, um, sold over the counter, used to help muscle release. Um, the muscles to release energy. Um, stomach and muscle cramps, nausea, weight gain, and could you know damage the liver and kidney if uh, 
I guess, too much abuse of it. And then right. you're and my personal favorite, right? The stimulants. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, stimulants increase heart rate, blood pressure, and they're, in, you know, taking to improve endurance, reduce fatigue, increase alertness. But, you know, strokes, dehydration, convulsions, heart attack, all those crazy things, other side effects, baldness, acne, infertility, hypertension, all the lovely things that I'm sure your wives and girlfriends and boyfriends or whoever love, you know what I mean? But a uh, good example, caffeine pills, amphetamines, ephedra, which is a herbal supplement. Uh, Sudafedrin is actually one, you know, and uh, yeah. All right. All right. I'll take it. So, so, so you're done. Yeah, that's a wrap. That's, we've heard, that, we've they heard, are we've heard of all the popular. drugs in the world. Okay. All right. <laughs> most popular. All right. They're so the most popular. And we ran through some of the benefits, some of the dangers. I'll take that. Um, so if we're going to start doing that, what, what are we talking about? Obviously the dangers of it is, is what made, uh, it made it troublesome in sports, uh, as far as the committees trying to, to ban it. Um, and I, I guess you have some history on that as well, don't you? Oh yeah. You know, uh, now, now I need to caution you wrap it up. <laughs> All right. I'll try to make this <laughs> Drug use, you know what I mean? Performance enhancing drug use in its most simplistic form has been going on for over a hundred years, well over a hundred years. I mean, at least in the competition setting of the Olympics and stuff like that. But I mean, you could range back to the third century BC, you know, ancient Greek Olympians used brandy, wine, hallucinogenic mushrooms, sesame seeds, everything. That's how, that. That's how I got ready for that. That's how I got ready for the show today, actually. <laughs> Mushrooms and sesame seeds. Yeah, and the brandy. Yeah, I, I just I, I dove right into the whole subject. That's all. That's awesome. I like it. Yeah, I wish I would. I should have grabbed a glass or something. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, yeah, overcome fatigue and injury. You know what I mean? They wanted to. You know, these guys were looking to be brave. They had to battle other human beings, so they needed every bit of an edge. You know what I mean? Or at least take off the edge. Um, chariot racers in 100 AD uh, fed their horses you know, hydromel, which is an uh, alcoholic beverage made from honey to make them run faster and, and having more endurance. Uh, also, they took strychnine, but not the humans, not the horses, but, you know, gladiators would take strychnine, which is, uh, I mean, one of the earliest, you know, versions of poison that uh, would actually give energy. But you'll see in 1929, they actually, the governing body, which was the International Association of Athletics Federation, that's the governing body of sport and track and field, became the first international sporting federation to prohibit doping. They prohibited it in 1928. Yeah, with no, um, with no test. With no test. The test didn't officially start until 1968 when the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, um, that governing body started officially testing for drugs in competition. Um, but... Performance enhancing drugs, like I said, have been used in the Olympics well before 1968. If you look at, you know, I, I saw a funny story um, looking at drugs before, because this has always been an interesting topic to me about whether or not, we, you know, athletes should be allowed to do this or not. Some guy named Charles Edouard Brown Sicard uh, developed some called the Elixir of Life. Um, he called it Sequarine with, hmm. after his name. The elixir of life. Uh, it was like the earliest known performance enhancing drug. Um, and an actual baseball player named Jid, Jim Pud Galvin uh, from the Pittsburgh Alleghenies downed it before every game in 1889. Um, well, what, you, uh, what was in it then? Was well, it? it was a concoction that consisted of testosterone drained from the gonads of dogs, rabbits, sheep, guinea pigs, and other animals. And uh, basically, it was to embody the essence of animal energy. So, so the, 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 pin, the pinnacle boost. of modern science, then. Yep. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so we got the Olympic uh, drug testing beginning in 1968. We've got the NFL starting steroids in 87. We got the U.S. Congress getting involved in 88 with the Anti Drug Abuse Act. Uh, they got them classifying anabolic steroids as a controlled substance. The World Anti Doping Agency. WADA is founded in 1999. The U.S. Anti-Doping Agency, USADA, is established in 2000. 2003, we got MLB coming up with a steroid policy and so forth and so on. So these were all the actions taken to fight it. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I think the problem with this right here is there's no real good way to fight it, right? No, because athletes, trainers, 
chemists, doctors. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it's a money thing. You know what I mean? It's a money sport. Drugs, money, and um, and, and, and you, know, guys, you have the highest level of competition. Like everyone's looking to get that edge. You're not cheating. You're not trying. Um, so so I guess and, and our premise here is that the, the the world recognizes this. Recognizes that the the players are gonna find new ways to adapt. They're gonna keep overcoming and they're going to come up with new technology. They're going to have a new elixir full of other gonad juice uh, that, that's not being tested for. So I guess in, in our scenario here, we have a situation where the world kind of goes, you know what? Screw it. Let them do it. Like if they want to do it, it's on you. So I, I, that's a scenario we're looking at, right? Yeah. I mean, essentially, I mean, these guys are, like you said, they're, they're looking for the edge. They're looking to become the best of the best. The, you know, the best in their sport, the best of what they do, whether or not it's an individual sport uh, in, a, in the Olympics. I mean, everybody wants that. And a lot of these guys are willing to pay the financial price and the ultimate price with their body and their health and their life. Um, which when you think about it in the end, like, hey, man, is a gold medal worth you being, you know, having a heart attack or a stroke and being put in a coma or in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. I mean, is that, is that, rhetor is, is that rhetorical? <laughs> yes, it's absolutely <laughs> rhetorical. I mean, right. look, man, I want to win like the next guy, but I, you know, I'm not, at, not at the cost, you know, I mean, look at this. People were taking strychnine. Like when I heard, you know, when I hear strychnine, I think of like rat poison. Like that's what I think of. Like that's, they put strychnine in rat poison and you got some, you know, some American marathon or Tom Hicks, you know what I mean? Some, some brass worker from, from Massachusetts taking a milligram of this shit with brandy and egg whites in a marathon at the 22 mile marker, you know, to finish. And he and nearly the, died. And in a gold medal marathon at that too, in the Olympics. Yeah. It was in, in 1904. I mean, yeah. strict nine. I mean, so cheating has always been there. I mean, you know, performance and cheating, whatever, performance hands and drugs, getting the edge. It's always been there. I mean, it, it's because because you have to you have to keep up. You look in the 50s when the Soviets started using, uh, you know, and they started winning all the weightlifting competitions and the U.S. learns about it. And so they create their own uh, their own drugs, even though the U.S. is creating to compete with the weightlifters like it is a it's a it's an arms race. Like You cannot fall behind in this or you will find yourself on the outside looking in. Absolutely. I mean, look at this. 1927, right? University of Chicago chemist Fred Koch, Koch, if I'm, Koch, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Woof. Every one of those was bad. Let's <laughs> yeah, all of them. Koch. I'm going to go with Fred Koch, right? Isolate <laughs> and extracts testosterone from pulverizing bull testicles and treating the testosterone with benzene and acetone to obtain its essence. Basically, he created the first, you know, testosterone pill. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, amphetamines are produced and, and replaced strychnine, thank God, right? <laughs> 1930. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the first signs of like amphetamine, um, you know, amphetamine, um, boosting performance and cheating there. And then synthetic testosterone comes out in 1935. I mean, doctors were looking to manipulate these things on every level. I mean, in 35, they studied it in young men and it proved to build heavier and stronger chest and shoulder muscle growth. Um, so they speculated in the Olympics when the Soviet Union started competing in the Olympics for the first time and they dominated weightlifting, like you were saying, there was speculation that they used this synthetic testosterone to, to boost hormones. Hmm. Yeah, they um, obviously from there, we end up with a, 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 some, some rough periods there in the 70s and 80s then where we have everyone's hopped up on a, a lot of stimulants, basically, right? They're, you're greenies, you're... Your cocaine, your uh, your your methamphetamines, your your all your little pills he got right there, your uppers, yeah. party on. <laughs> right. I mean, it sounds sounds like a good time, but uh, so we got that in the eighties, um, and then you got oh man, look at all these. There's so many scandals here. In seventy eight, every German athlete except for sailing was receiving anabolic steroids. <laughs> every Sales. German athlete. Sailors went to the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they did. Well, um, you know, football in, in 69, they said, you know, football and baseball introduced drugs from team coaches and trainers and doctors mm -hmm. as well as other players. I mean, um, they said one doctor, you know, with the St. Louis Cardinals at the time told Sports Illustrated in 1969 that they used Dexamil 
and dexedrin, which are both amphetamines and also other barbiturates, you know, to, you know, and antidepressants. They added these things together basically to make a drug concoction to help these guys get a boost and an edge and build endurance. Hmm. I mean, it was this, you know, they, they'd have them by 70, they had them taking steroids at lunch. You know what I mean? They're feeding it to them in the cafeteria on a little saucer plate, you know, a little, little saucer plate, a little milk, take your steroids, boys. Like Jesus. Yeah. And then we got in the, uh, the Olympics here, you got, uh, in 88, Ben Johnson having his gold medal stripped of him after failing his steroid test. Uh, and then the, the award being passed on to Carl Lewis, obviously, uh, mind you, that was like the biggest of its time and probably still is considered one of the biggest of its time, especially. Yeah, and I, I, I saw that. I saw when I was looking up, like, here's this thing I never heard about. And they're like, oh, it's the biggest sports scandal ever is how it's labeled. <laughs> well, hell, I mean, me and you, you and I were kids, you know, yeah. in 88. I mean, I was six years old and I remember Carl Lewis. I, remember you know, Carl I, Lewis. I remembered him, but I didn't remember anyone. I didn't remember Ben Johnson beat him. And then, you know, I saw it years later and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, a, he and you look at him and you're like, my God, he was shredded. That dude was carved out of, you know, he's just chiseled out of granite. And now it doesn't, you know, looking at him, you're like, oh, okay. I see it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I see it. it's crazy because, you know, um, years late, like, I mean, I think in the early 2000s, they retested samples. The Olympics had the samples from that Olymp- that 88 Olympics retest it, and they found masking agents in Carl Lewis's blood um, or urine samples or whatever, and they never did anything about it because I guess he had been well-retired, so they never stripped him. And uh, hmm. I'm sure that caused a little rift from the, the Canadian government, you know what I mean, uh, and the, you know, the Canadian Olympic team on not having him stripped as well. But I mean, Ben Johnson was stripped days later after it. Yeah. And he broke a record. I mean, 979 at the time. Oh my God. And the 100 meters there. Yeah. Lightning fast. I I don't know. What did St. Bolt run? 971? I mean, that's for us for another show. Yeah. <laughs> for another show. I researched Look, one thing and now you want to bring up something else. All right. Hey, I'm just saying the point is like, I mean, that was. If I, he probably wasn't too far off from Usain Bolt, and that was back in '88, you know, taking drugs, and that was prop. Like I said, at that time, easily the biggest sports scandal in the '80s, and certainly the, you know, the biggest of the of the Olympiad. You know what I mean? The history mm-hmm. of the Olympics, and uh, Ben Johnson. I mean, when you think of his name, everybody's always going to think cheater. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, they will. Um, so we got the Balco scandal happened in 2002. That's where baseball gets all wrapped up into this mess. So what, what happened here was uh, Balco was making an undetectable steroid, a, uh, which we talked about before, the uh, the clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, obviously the, the tests were developed and large swaths of the elite athletes were testing positive, um, which set up a situation where the MLB tested all the players uh, and they and they agreed to be tested anonymously on, under the condition it would never come out, and they to get a, a scope for how big uh, the problem was. But then when uh, law enforcement got involved with the Balco scandal, they uh, they took those records, and that's where a lot of names got leaked right there that were tied to the Balco scandal. Yeah, well, yeah, MLB actually banned steroids in '91, but they didn't start testing for PEDs until 2003, after years of allegations Mm -hmm. and federal instigation into Balco. Um, And then later on, after Balco, I think in 2005 is when Canseco, Jose Canseco wrote the autobiography, Juiced, you know, and that he put names in it. And uh, that got the ball rolling even further and got into the Mitchell report. But I mean, think about this with, with Balco, right? Balco basically came from that incredible 1997 hey, season. You're talking you know? about the Maguire? Yeah. 98. Yeah, I mean, it was 90. Well, uh, I thought it was midway. Oh, he got traded. Didn't he get traded midway through 97, 97, 98 season, wasn't it? Mm, maybe. Yeah, I thought it was 97. That's why. Because he played for the athlete. He played for Oakland in 96. And he hit 52 home runs. Um and then he got traded midway through the 97 season to the Cardinals. And then that set the stage for it. It could have been 98, but I thought it was 97. But basically between him and 
Sammy Sosa. I mean, just going back and forth, looking to break Roger Maris's record, which stood for 37 years. And um, I mean, look, I, I watched baseball. I grew up watching football and basketball and I love all sports and I watch baseball and hockey too. But like I started growing into a hockey fan in the kind of early Legion of Doom era of the Flyers. And I always loved the Phillies because I loved Mike Schmidt. But the Phillies were, you know, bad for a few seasons, you know, midway through the 80s, all the way in the early 90s before, you know, Macho Row. And like I loved Macho Row. And then when everything kind of ended. We're getting pretty homer here. Sorry. To get off that boat, everything ended after the 93 World Series. Going 94, I remember being so excited to go down the Phillies because they were, you know, they were like a lock contender for the World Series. And then the strike. And then, like, after that, the Uh, Phillies sucked. I I think baseball in general lost a lot of fans. Yeah, Yeah, lost a lot of fans. A real PR hit for them, that strike. And when they came back, you're right. they, 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 They couldn't sell out stadiums. It was, it was it was looking bad, and it was McGuire and Sosa, the they home run back. chase of '98, when they brought it back. Yeah, it was absolutely yeah, and I mean, it brought me back. I mean, I even if I wasn't, you know, between watching games, I would literally turn on ESPN like every night and be like, "All right, did they hit one? Did they hit one?" You know, you're listening on the radio, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it was '98. I'm losing my mind. Um, again, my time's wrong, but yeah, that that home run chase was historic, and um. And like, you want to think that your heroes, you know, these are larger than life guys. These guys are the best in the world. Like, I didn't even think at the time about drugs because you're like, oh man, baseball is like a family sport. It's a wholesome sport. You know what I mean? These guys are just major athletes. It's the nineties. Like these guys are all like (laughs) jacked up. I mean, it's the nineties. Everyone's doing everything nice. Yeah. I'm just saying it's the nineties. Like by, by now the training, the, 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 the training regiments, like what these guys do to get themselves prepared. I'm not thinking 1980s wrestling, professional wrestling, you know, Roy era, you know, I'm thinking these guys are, you know, they're just the best at what they do. Like people are getting better, you know, guys are getting faster, stronger, bigger, like naturally it's evolution. That's the, like that's the fan in you. You, you want to believe it. You, it you, was, want, plus, you want to believe it. I was a high school kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was in high school when this has happened. I wasn't thinking as like a, you hadn't spent you know, three a, days researching the seven types of steroids <laughs> leading, into, leading into it. I wasn't a cynical 37 year old man. It's like, they're all on the juice, except Griffey. <laughs> Griffey's natural. You know, he was hurt. And he still put up numbers. <laughs> These guys are all juice bitches. <laughs> you know, no, like, um, yeah. You know, you want to believe these, these guys are, you know, doing it the right way. And, putting in the time. That's why they're approached. That's why I never made it because I stopped playing basketball and football because that's I why was, yeah, no, 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 because that's I, why I wasn't going to no, know because I, I got my license. I wanted to hang out and party and I wasn't ready to take it to the next level. I didn't, I couldn't take, I wasn't going to take it to the next level. I so knew ba- it. I wasn't going to. So, so basically other than partying, that's the only going to stop you from going to the hall of fame. No, no. I mean, uh, dude, uh, Come on, little, 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 you know, smoking a little herb here and there in high school, you know, drinking with the boys. I was an early partier. All right. All right. I was definitely, um, I definitely stepped up before 21, I guess, and, uh, got into the party crowd, but no, I, right. well, I played just, sports. Just to be clear, you're under arrest. This is being recorded. Yeah. I'm, I'm in jail now. <laughs> I'm actually behind bars right now at a local <laughs> County lockup. You didn't know that. Uh, no, but I mean, no, I just wasn't going to be good enough. You know, like I was, I just wasn't going to be good enough. I was smaller. I wasn't as strong. I wasn't as fast as half the guys I played. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I knew it at an early age. So I slowed down with sports and played them more recreationally. And, but that's why these guys go to the big leagues dude, because they take it to the next level. Yeah. Not because of drugs. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is, in our world here where no one cares about doping, you're able to take uh, your Andro, you're able to take your, your stimulants, your creatines, all, all that. You're, you're able to do some blood doping. You're not making it. I'm Reno. No, Del Mar doesn't, doesn't no, make time. Cause here's the thing too. I was like a, almost a whole year younger than everybody in my class because and look, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not giving you the whole, I was a genius. I <laughs> skipped a level. No, like 
No, my but mom you was were like, a super athlete. I think it's what we came. Yeah, no, no, my mom was like, "No, I'm I'm not going to hit the cutoff. Fuck that bullshit. I want you out of the house at an early age and got me in kindergarten at like five or six, you know, <laughs> or probably five. And I was like, yeah, I was literally like on average like nine months to a, a year younger than like everyone in my class. So while everybody was hitting those growth spurts, you know, guys were you know jumping up to like five eleven, six foot, one hundred and eighty five pounds. I was still like, you know, five, three buck 30 soaking wet, <laughs> nowhere near as fast or tall. Like it's funny after I got out of high school, I shot up. Like I said, I'm, I'm the cusp, I'm on the cusp of six, two. I'm a, a larger man. Now I like see people at the bar like, Oh, what you play linebacker. I'm like, no, I played safety and corner. And, uh, no, I, <laughs> I only played for a little bit and I was nowhere near this big in high school. Well, I know, um, I know you got me off my, my train of thought here. What were we talking hmm. about? <laughs> Oh, well, basically these guys cheating and like what took them to the next level? Like, yeah, but that's the thing though. When I think of athletes, like I think of like guys like, you know, Jordan, Brian Dawkins, you know, Brady, like, even though Brady's not like this, like super athlete, I just think of guys who like, they push themselves to the absolute limits and, and break through, you know, they, they, they hit a plateau. They overcome it naturally with, with more training, with, with mental acuity, with, with, you know, not, you know, not by drugs. You hope, you know what I mean? Like you hope these guys are just getting in the gym and like, you know, doing their Herschel Walker pushups and sit-ups and, and just pushing themselves mentally and physically without that extra boost. And call me, you know, I'm an optimist, I, mean, I guess. But, but, to, but to be clear, to bring it back to Herschel Walker, uh, here's a, a massive dude who played in an era when steroids weren't really being tested for in, in the NFL. So while we don't know what he did, it's it's uh, you can speculate. And, and that, that ends up being a, 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 a black mark on everyone who even played in that era. And you hear that from a lot of the steroid era in baseball people. Well, they, the guys who kept it clean, like, well, everyone, you just assume everyone did it. And that's not fair to the people who do. It's so in our, fair. in our situation here, everyone's doing it. Everyone has the ability to do it. No one can be uh, said they, they they weren't they weren't fa- fairly treated. You know what I mean? Everyone has the opportunity to do the to do the drugs. So if that's the case, I guess I got to pose it to you. Well, what's what changes in the NFL? I mean, right now we're looking at. I mean, we look at suspensions in the NFL since '89. I mean, I, I don't even know how to calculate this number. Cause they mixed their PEDs with their, uh, with, uh, substance abuse. So you're looking at 490 suspensions in the NFL since 89. Like that is a, a lot. And again, I, I don't know how many of these are, are PED related, but I would bet it's not a small amount. And then you look back in, uh, when you say probably when you say, a lot and substance yeah. abuse, there's a lot of substance abuse going on in the NFL. Like, I mean, you know, just, just in 2009, if there's a confidential survey of retired players, uh, had one in ten of them admitting to using anabolic steroids during their playing time. Um, you got 2015, an unnamed veteran player. Steroids aren't the problem. HGH is the big problem. For the past four or five years, the league is almost overrun by HGH. So these guys are, are, are I mean, like the people who have have left the game. Um, Jim Haslett, even during the 80s, uh, he said that uh, he was he was using PDs, and he said that. Uh, he estimated half of the league was using them and every single defensive lineman like the, the, this is a this is the players coming out and saying this that they are they're they are acknowledging there it is widespread use like what's the point of the testing here and like, like if it's this widespread what what are we doing wrong i mean yeah. obviously, obviously we know what we're doing wrong here is that we, you know, they're changing the the drugs up they're changing what's testable um also you have a situation in the four major the four major sports here um, where they have strong players unions or that negotiate these kind of testing rules and they negotiate to only be tested once a year or random one person per team. There's all these different little quirks and rules to it. They, they've negotiated to get around it. So it doesn't happen in the Olympics. There's no players union. So they're able to make stricter uh, testing rules. Um, but yeah, in the NFL, I think it's safe to assume it is probably still wildly used. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, think about this. I mean, these guys have, you know, these guys have God money. You know what I mean? They've got cash for days. And when you got, you know, a guy who is basically, 
you know, he's, he's looking for that edge. He's going to do whatever it takes to get there. He's going to pay whatever price he has to pay. And with the trainers and the doctors now, I mean, they're, it's, it's an evolution of, you know, the drug taking and stuff like that, how the mask it, the next drug, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing too. When they say stuff like, Oh, well, I'm pretty certain that almost 90% of the NFL was taking this in the eighties or whatever. All right. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. I don't know. I mean, we'll never know. They, but certainly, always they certainly people. have a more inside view than anyone else does. Absolutely. In these cases, we're talking about former players. We're talking about anonymous surveys uh, of former players. But I mean, th- th- these are more inclined to be speaking the truth than, uh, or have access to the truth than, than me, you, or or anyone with an opinion on this. Um, but but ultimately, like if they were to allow it, like how, how does this change? How does that change? Cause obviously the guys don't feel the need to mask it. Then it becomes easier for them to use it. It becomes, well, it makes the already great athletes even more incredible. Um, if they decide to take it and it makes the lesser athletes, you know, to be able to jump up on another level. I mean, so if you got a guy like LeBron, we'll say who doesn't take it, maybe like a a middle of the road player, like a bench player that comes in like a sixth man all of a sudden takes it. Now his numbers increase, you know, his endurance increases. He's able to get in the game more. He's able to focus more. He gets a, you know, a deadly stroke and puts on more points. You know what I mean? All of a sudden his career is better by it. (laughs) To be clear, (laughs) I wouldn't use the word deadly stroke. (laughs) You know, deadly stroke. You know what I mean? When you're putting, come on, you're referencing the guy potentially using PED. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, Good point. Good point. Sorry. Not a deadly stroke on the floor. I mean, a deadly stroke shooting the ball, like dropping threes on cats. All right. Now, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Good point. Um, yeah, Freudian slip, right? Anyway, so um, so so in, in the NBA, and let's bring it back to that. We're talking about LeBron James and these guys. So the NBA has had very few people test positive. They've had what fourteen since two thousand, and, and and almost no one of any uh, of any real known. I mean, you got Noah, Tarka Glue. I mean, these those are the biggest names on there. Like, yeah. no one gets suspended here. Now, I, I wonder if it's not. Obviously, they have a strong players union to control their testing. But I also wonder if it's if these kind of um, a lot of these steroids are rough on your joints. I feel like uh, the NBA may not be the ideal place to have your joints going bad. Um, yeah, you don't want to destroy your joints. I mean, your knees, you know, you know and elbows go in that game. Wrist. Yeah, you know, and, and, and like you know, your career is over. These guys want to be strong, but they also want to maintain that leanness. Uh, it's not that there's not drugs and you know that can that can do that. But uh, just the damage they can do to their their joints is concerning. Um, so I wonder well, if there's not, I wonder if there's not as it's not as I, don't, I, I would I would guess based on the amount of people that have tested positive and the amount of um, and the sport itself I would just see it's, I feel like it's not prone to attracting uh, PD abuse. I want to go back to something there, real quick. Well, wait, wait, wait for me just to just to refresh my whole thought there. Let me just wrap yeah. up my thought. I don't see the allowing of PEDs having a huge effect in the NBA. Like, I just don't see a lot of players jumping into, I think guys trying to make the league guys on the cusp, but they're going to do it. They're going to try and get that little extra edge. But I think the NBA is a superstar league. It's a superstar driven league. These guys, the guys are that good. They're that good because they, they've worked hard because they have a natural body type that allows them to get there as well. There's less NBA players. Probably in any other sport, right? That's uh, true. Outside, you know, any team and, sport. Uh, yeah, any other team sport. There's less NBA players. These guys are the best of the best. I mean, and if you look at them too, I mean, their game is endurance and strength. You know what I mean? They need muscle strength. They need tissue strength. They need the ligaments, like you said. And it's an endurance game. I mean, maybe what's it's going to help maybe a guy stay in the game a little longer, you know, instead of needing, a, you know, a, a four-minute break on the bench. It's only a two minute and you're back in the game. Maybe you got some extra energy in, you know, overtime if you have it. But so you're advocating guys, for the use of EPO, then it sounds like if you're going to be in the uh, No, I'm not advocating for anything. But what I'm saying is these guys are already endurance monsters. I put an NBA player up against anyone when it comes to pure speed, endurance and strength. I mean, I think for me personally, I just think it's the most most athletic game. I do. Yeah. And I'm not I mean, saying it's that it's might physical. be a fight for another day, but yeah, I would love to have that conversation. I mean, listen, I know hockey and, and 
and football are physical. And I know hockey are on skates. So I give those guys crazy respect. I mean, I mean the, the cardio of, of uh, combat sports as well is, is crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, guys who could go into the deeper rounds, championship rounds, it's nuts. Boxers going 12 rounds. I agree. Um, but I mean, to run up and down a court like that for, you know, 48 minutes is insane. And I mean, you got guys like Ben Simmons and LeBron playing like, you know, 44 minutes, you know, and in the playoffs, they're probably, they're not coming out of the game. I mean, that's like, dude, I'd be, I'm gassed five minutes <laughs> into the first. And I, I think, I think just in general though, I think the, if we were to legalize steroids and all PEDs across the board, I just don't see the NBA having a, a much larger problem than the one they already have. I just don't see it. I, I don't think it's a, I think it's a minimal effect on it. I think it's the guys are too big. There's a, there's a, there's a size, there's a size bar that prevents just everyone having access to being able to make the NBA as well. So if yeah. you're not, if you're not six foot nine, there's good luck. <laughs> like, you're you not going to be five eleven taking. Yeah. You know, yeah. PEDs you, you and exactly. Training. You can't just be five eleven, take a bunch of PEDs and, and hard work your way into the NBA. It's going to take a little more than that. You got to have some <laughs> kind of natural gift at birth. <laughs> like, I agree hundred percent, but I wanted to go back to like what you're saying about like, you know, when they were talking about in the eighties and stuff, everybody was doing it. Okay. That's fair. If, I mean, you're right. These guys that are in the locker rooms that are on the field with each other. They know who's taking what they know, who's shooting each other up with, you know, putting the needles in the ass. Mm -hmm. But I always look at it like this, you know, I, I, I look at it from that. Um, I guess that, that, courtroom standpoint you know what i mean innocent until proven guilty like i just give everybody the benefit of the doubt that until a test comes out that they've been you know caught or you know there's speculation and they've been caught you know i i give them the benefit of the doubt like sure i know these guys like lala zato admitted to taking him back in the late 70s and early 80s you know and then you know, I, I mean, he's a cautionary tale too of the dangers of it too i, yeah, I know he died of brain cancer right well, yeah. I mean, but he says was caused by a steroid use um though that has not been proven in a by a doctor but no but they haven't left. been able to prove any of it the, yeah it's actually done it but i mean there's nonetheless his life is ruined through football at the very least you know his uh just the just the damage his brain took as well as obviously ending up with the cancer yeah that's so. what's crazy to me because my thought is my god especially in football like these guys are going to have enough health issues after the game ends yeah. for them. You know what I mean? When they retire, I, I, they're going to have going another... on the same path here. Cause I was thinking a similar thought here. If you were to <laughs> legalize steroids, what we may do is, is increase the length of careers, thus making it more dangerous. Yeah. You'll increase the length of careers, but you'll decrease the life expectancy of the athlete yes. naturally. I mean, these guys are going to have, and if, and if they don't die young, I mean, they're going to have severe, issues, pain, brain damage, heart issues, anything that comes from it. I mean, ligament. I mean, you hear all the stories about guys who took all those concussions. You know what I mean? Like like Jim McMahon and stuff like that who like need to have like tracking devices put on them. Guys who can't walk. You know what I mean? Who have terrible back disorders. You know what yeah. I mean? Now, 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 imagine, now imagine we're, we, we've set up a system that allows them to go out there and play the whole time. It allows them to take the drugs that allow them to that props them up for another season of taking those kind of hits. You know, like some of those guys, when you're talking about the guys who can barely walk, imagine if, you know, while he was still playing, the, the, these drugs were able to allow him to, to take more of those hits. Like, you know, this is, I think that was the one, my takeaway from this was with, uh, with the, in the NFL in particular was the steroids would allow longer careers and worse life quality of life for the players. A short term solution to winning or getting the edge to a long, long-term problem for somebody's life. Basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes down to this, like, yeah, I mean, you could choose to play football naturally and know that, you know, there's consequences to playing football damage on your body, damage to your brain, CTE, you know, you see the, you know, the effects of CT on the brain and, and the suicides and the, crazy things that have happened with different football players, like, you know, and, and athletes, God rest their soul that, you know, they went through that kind of pain. And then now you're adding drugs on top of that. So now you're adding this, this will to win and be the best and put their body on the line and do whatever it takes 
to whatever degree now, and then you're drugging them on top of that, and now the the damage is is going to be, I mean, significantly, significantly more broad for a, a larger group of athletes, and it's it's just an, an all, a bad spot, cycle that's going to come around and around every time. Yeah. So, so I, I guess we, we mentioned before the, uh, the players associations having a, a good, a big effect in the, the rules of the testing in each one of these sports, which is kind of allowed for some lax rules in a lot of these leagues. But when we look at the, uh, the epitome of lax rules, I mean, boxing, woof, it's like yeah. basically state by state, they're making it up as they go. It's it, it's you're agreeing to it with the other fighter in, in a contract. What kind of testing can be done? Like most of the time, you're, you're fighting what two, three times a year. Uh, most of the year that you can do whatever you want when no one's testing you. Like the testing is if you get caught in boxing or, or MMA, I always say this: you're insane. You know, when, like when your fight's coming up, you're fighting once or twice a year. What are you doing? Like how are you getting caught? Yeah, well, I think actually MMA is even more strict because no, they, 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 are, they are in the in the UFC because they have a league that enforces the rules. But in boxing, they have a no, governing body yeah, pretty much. And, they, and yeah, boxing, I think Nevada yeah. State Athletic Commission is big for them. Yeah, um, boxing has none of that oversight where guys can just go fight in Florida. Then, like, yeah, you have the Nevada State, but like, yeah, I'll just go fight in Florida. I'll go fight in New Mexico. I'll go fight in Connecticut. They can go fight anywhere. And with different rules for, for every state, and they're, they're the promoters are agreeing on contracts that are all about, you know, whatever the rules are going to be of each fight. You get uh, sanctioned anywhere, basically. Yeah. Uh, they use different size gloves. This is how we had Tommy yeah. Morrison fighting while he had tested positive for HIV. Because yeah. he found a state that would let him fight. Like, boxing's testing is absurd. And we look at the list of guys who still got caught. You got Roy Jones Jr., Shane Mosley, Vitaly Klitschko, James Tony, Holyfield, Fernando Vargas, Antonio Tarver, just to name a few. Like yeah. these guys, it's impressive that they're they're able to get caught. Like it's it really is with how lax the rules are there. So when I look at those kind of sp- in boxing in particular, I can see the legalization of that having zero effect because they're doing whatever the hell they want to today, regardless of the rules. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's insane. Boxing. That's crazy. It's crazy to think of that. I mean, also. You know, they're not only doing that, but I don't know if you remember back in two thousand nine. You remember the boxer Antonio Margarito. I absolutely do. Yeah, he used plaster of Paris inside his gloves. Basically, it like becomes concrete when it gets yep. wet from like yep. so they like wet or put sweat, you know, with the sweat of his hands. Mm-hmm. And basically it's, it's a it's a hardness. bludgeon. Yeah, and yep. he bludgeoned Shane Mosley in, in their fight. And uh afterwards, when they took off his gloves, they saw uh, Shane Mosley's trainer saw that extra padding. Yeah, and and, like, and, the, and the powder falling out. Like that's what yeah. they saw. Like these, yeah, boxing is, yeah, you're right. It's insane. But that's, I think that's one of the major reasons why boxing has diminished so greatly in uh, not only, you know, globally, but especially in this country, because boxing used to be one of the top sports. It was, it was, the, it was, the, it was the American pastime. Yeah, for a while. It was. But, but, that is a topic we need to discuss on another show. We we need to allocate the proper time for a good boxing. Discussion. Oh yeah. We could definitely do that. As you may, may or may not know. I'm a hockey guy, but uh, my number two is, is still boxing. I I grew up watching boxing. I love boxing. I grew up in that Mike Tyson era. Oh, man. All yeah. right. All right. Well, let's, let's save it. Let's save I it. I know. <laughs> Pernell Whitaker, all those guys love, love Bernard Hopkins, you know, let's so we'll that. do that. Before we spend the next three hours talking about boxing <laughs> in the middle of our show on steroids. So, <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. Here's here's one to throw at you, right? Who are the... Uh, who are the like the those notable athletes that pissed hot that you think of those historic cheaters? Because you know I got I got a little list of, of people well, here. I want I, I want to get back to that one because uh, I I think I have that one planned for later. Oh um, okay. What I want to talk about though is like we talked about what if Major League Baseball allowed it? Now we we saw Major League Baseball basically allow it till two thousand five, right? I mean we basically saw what what baseball looks like when you don't police it. Um, cause since 2005, they suspended 70 different players for, they've had 70 suspensions, oh, 70 different players. I take it back since, um, since 2005 for PED use. So I, I think we we're starting to see in, in baseball, the, uh, the tide kind of turn. I think baseball was one of those sports that really took the hit in the media and in and, and the public eye with the all the Balco, the biogenesis, all these scandals wrapped around Mitchell baseball. report. 
everything, report. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, like you said before, the uh, the the juice to the Jose Canseco book, the Game of Shadows book. There's so much bad press. Uh, Alex Rodriguez and Barry Bonds existing. Like this, <laughs> these guys are so bad for the face of baseball. That That's I crazy because they were already great without yeah. it. And those guys were easy Hall of Famers that now may have a tough time getting in. Yeah, well, you know, if you allow it, then basically they're those asterisks go away, and they're in the, you know, they're in the top echelon of that being, numbers that being historically. Said. That's all being said. Barry Bonds was one of the best players of all time. But Unbelievable. When he, but when he look, look, look at his career now, if he played in a, a league that allowed HGH, they allowed the clear, they allowed all these different PEDs. He's maybe the best baseball player of all time. And this guy's his stats are unreal. He's the all time home run leader, right? He has the, yep. the single season record. The guy's a seven time MVP, a 14 time all star. Uh, this guy's got it all. He's got the golden gloves. He's got, he he's had got like a, what was his average? 290, 300. Yeah. I mean, I was hoping for stats, man. Reno to pull that out for me. I know I didn't, <laughs> I didn't was pull the stats out on bonds this time around, <laughs> but then you got like Alex Rodriguez, but you, what I'm saying is I think baseball, you're finally seeing that one begin to take testing seriously where the, they're being aggressive with it. They're, uh, they're testing more often. Um, and, and their, their penalties are harsh. You yeah, know, I that. mean, who's the last guy who got caught? D Gordon. Right? Was that 2016? It went in baseball. Yeah. No, and people get caught. We got people from. So I got. Like I got. I'm sure some other guys have gotten caught. I'm just trying to think of one of the like bigger names. I mean, I think he was on the Dodgers at the time when he got caught in 2016. Yeah, we, got, we got Robinson Cano testing uh, popping in uh, 2008. Well, oh wow! Just two years ago. Wow! And he got 50 games. He got 80 games. 80 games. Yeah. Maybe because of baseball's other issues, like. <laughs> Maybe I didn't care enough to know that. I mean, when I think of baseball, you think of the the, the big names, Barry Bonds, A-Rod, McGuire, Manny Ramirez, mm -hmm. I mean, a multitude of times, Palmero, who was another 500 club guy, another 300 hitter, you know, that you think of anyone from the nineties, they're all, they're, all the big stars were these yeah. Jack superheroes. Out Lenny <laughs> out there looking ridiculous and just knocking dingers around all day. Yeah, Gary well, Sheffield was another one that you're like, wow, Sheffield's great. Andy Pettit. Andy Pettit, I feel like got a pass though. I feel I think like he, he I think he, he got, got a pass, pass because he just he didn't look the part, but he still he was the part. He was the guy. Yeah, but he admitted to it. I think what he did is he came out, he admitted to it, he apologized, and he explained why he used it. And everybody's like, oh, okay. But <laughs> like the, but like Barry Bonds was never actually he admitted to using a topical cream. Mm -hmm that is that his trainer gave him but that he didn't know what it was and but he was never actually uh convicted or, or caught actually like testing positive for peds yeah. uh a rod was um yep. yeah he, he got uh I mean, it twice i believe right yeah and he did other bush league things too in his career like he used to yell at guys as pop flies are up he used to tip off pitches screw, screw uh, team. yeah i like all that stuff yeah, like he was, I like all that stuff. He played dirty. I like that. He was dirty. Uh, he was dirty on the field and dirty in the in the training room. You know what I mean? Like uh, McGuire, McGuire's tough because man, I, I still harken back to that that summer, and it was great. And you're like, damn, man, damn. Like you know, I don't want to call him Shoeless Joe. Like say it ain't so, Mark. But it was that moment. It was like, come on, man. Like, damn. And, and he admitted to what he did now, which is, you know, he good, did good man, whatever, but you know, it doesn't change the fact. Made to he, regret. He, he was out there knocking 70 home runs in, in one year, breaking Roger Maris's record all on the juice. Yeah. And well, you know, it's a shame too. Like I know a couple years after that, Howard, Ryan Howard was, was on the verge of breaking the, the actual natural record. You can't and, uh, it's yours to bring Philly back into this. Yeah, sorry. I always do that somehow. I just, right? He didn't end up breaking. I think he fell too short. But even then, people were like, oh, he's juicing. It, that stigma. Like you said, the stigma before. Like that whole era of players, everybody's, you, everybody looks at him now with like a, you know, a fish eye, a little, little cocked eye, a little cocked head, like, uh, he could have been he could have been juicing like it's a shame too like i said i'd like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt it's hard to give barry bonds the benefit of the doubt because you saw you saw what he looked like for a majority of his career especially when he was with the pirates and the See, fact that he was unbelievable 
what you have here is the is the opposite of what you have with Maguire and Sosa. You have this in Bonds and, and Rodriguez. They're all cheaters. They've all cheated. They've all broken the rules. But Bonds and A-Rod are unlikable villains. Like it's just their it's just who they are. That's their yeah, nature. Yeah, they've got a scumbag nature to them. They got this is their nature. They're, they're not gonna tell you something to make you happy. They're not it's about what they're doing. And they did this to to bolster their own reputation, their own ego, their own legacy. And it's not to say Maguire and Sosa did not do the same thing, but they have been contrite and at least likable in interviews uh, where Bonds and A-Rod have always been kind of adversarial with everyone. Oh, so, yeah. They're vitriolic. They're just, they're, they, yeah, they come off like assholes. So, so they're, I think they're arrogant. Part of the reason you know. end up liking a guy like Maguire or Sosa is they smile for the camera. Bonds and A-Rod aren't, aren't going to do that. That's not who they are. No, but, but I just but wonder why they, Bonds did they it. all did the same thing. Why did Bonds do it? I just, I mean, I obviously you wanted to be the best ever and get it. But they, they say the reason Bonds did it is, uh, it was the '98. Um, it, it was it was the home run season. He, he said couldn't he, take he, watching somebody else. He didn't like what he saw. He he felt like he was watching uh something happen that he was he was watching the game get everyone be be able to have an edge and that he didn't have. And he said, no, not anymore. I'm I'm going to do it if, if this is if this is what the league wants. If this is what the fans want, I'm I'm gonna give it to them, and that's, that's exactly. and that came out in the uh, Game of Shadows from uh, uh, the book that came out in 2006. It, because it, I don't ever remember him having any injury issues. You know what I mean? Like when you think of a guy, like imagine like imagine if Ken Griffey, you know what I mean, was did it. All right, you so, know. So let, let, let's scale it back to this then. So we're getting back to the point of this whole thing. Whose legacy? In this scenario where we are allowed drugs, we have allowed PEDs. No one cares. The the police don't care. The the governing bodies don't care. The leagues don't care. The WADA, the USADA, none of them care. What anyone's doing, what, what you're putting in your body is your business. Go out there and knock a bunch of dingers in. In this world, whose legacy is uh is inflated? I don't know. I, I always go to Ken Griffey because I think that he was incredible. I think he was a great player. I think he he had historic numbers, but and he was injured a lot throughout his career, often injured. And I think it's those guys who were great and who had, you know, consistent greatness when they were on the field, um, but just couldn't stay on the field consistently. I think now PEDs help them stay on the field, elongate their career and elongate those numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Griffey would have been definitely up there, not only home run wise, um, you know, hits, uh, stolen bases, you know, you name it. I mean, I think it probably would have prolonged his career probably another six years. You yeah. know what I mean? And and he was incredible. He could have been in the home run chase. The fact that Bonds like saw that home run chase and was like, I need that edge so I could surpass these guys because I'm better than them. He, he pisses watched, me off even more. I mean, he watched uh, everyone else having an unfair edge that he didn't have. And he, he watched the, everyone celebrate and cheer it. Uh, but God, imagine if he could have done that without it. It kind of makes sense when you think about it that way. Like he watched everyone cheer these guys who everyone in baseball knew was cheating. And he saw that and said, like, what am I doing? I, I'm, an, I'm over here. looking like an idiot. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the things they're doing. The, 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 everyone loves these guys. That's arrogance though. That's, I mean, he it, needed to be more loved. He needed to be more I, I think, celebrated. I, think it was, I mean, yeah, the guy had a giant ego. There's no denying that about bonds, but like, uh, it makes sense to you to just see like, you know, if you're going out there and you're you're racing and, and somebody because zips by in a car and it's like I won that race you, and you're running on your feet you'd be like what well, I feel like an asshole I'm out here running like an idiot this guy's got a car <laughs> uh, I feel like that's what Barry Bonds saw he saw the guys driving by driving right by him with their cars and he's out here running around like an idiot and he's like I got to get myself a car yeah it sucks too because I think that guy is arrogant and and you know on you know not liked as he was. I think his career could have been historic had he not juiced. I still think he would have put up incredible numbers. That guy was an easy Hall of Famer, and now he's most likely not going to be because of it. He's your body Famer. just, yeah. But yeah, easy but, Hall of Famer, easy but, without it. But in the case of who's inflated, uh, if you allow drugs here, I, I think you have a guy who may be one of the best ever, who we, we saw on the juice, and he became the best ever. Um, he's not going to be enshrined. He's not going to get treated like it because of the juice. But I would say that for me, I look at who's, who's going to be inflated. I'm, I'm looking at bonds. It's a guy who 
to not be vilified like he has been. Like, like he's he's been the villain in this whole thing. He's been the the, the bad guy in all the steroid use, and he's not alone. He's just been the guy who's not uh, not smiled, not apologized, not taken it in stride. He's the guy who's fought it and lied about it and been adversarial with everyone about it. Uh, you know, he was convicted of perjury for it in 2011, lying to grand juries about it. And then he went back. This, this guy was willing to go back and try and get it overturned, but there was no jail time on it. He just didn't like it. So he went back and got it overturned in 2015. This guy's, he's petty. That's who he is. But like none of, none of this villain traits would have been exposed if uh, no one cared about the drugs. It's and true. that's why, and that's why I think he, his reputation, his legacy would inflate the most in this scenario right here. Yeah, all- his, his legacy and his reputation definitely, and his numbers. Imagine if he juiced even. Yeah, but, 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 but I like what you went with it because you went with it and said, "Well, give the drugs to Ken Griffey. Ken Griffey, if you're saying like Pitt Barry Bonds and Ken Griffey head to head on the juice." Oh yeah, Ken that's, Griffey yeah, versus Barry Bonds with- in the juice. I would have loved that. Would have been epic. Yeah, you know I, mean? uh, that- I, I agree. I, I think uh, I think they're, they're both good choices. I like them both for different reasons. I like it. You you, you went with the. Uh, the guy who we all think is clean and one of the greats. I went with a guy who we all know is one of the greats and dirty and said like, but I think both their legacies would be increased in a world where they're just allowed to do it. Um, Cause they would have been going head to head in some Superman style, uh, 98 home run kind of thing. Um, oh, it would be ridiculous. Yeah. It would have been Superman versus the Hulk. Those yeah. two, you know, smashing home runs. Yeah. Probably easily would have seen eighty home runs. So I guess of- the, I guess the question then is when we talk about whose legacy is inflated, we have these two guys whose legacy is hurt the most um, in this world where uh, steroids are, are legal. Hmm. I, I've got some thoughts here. Good. What do you got? I've got some thoughts. When I when I think of a uh, well, what is this? What's the steroids do? They're going to increase your longevity. They're going to increase your ability to work out more. They're gonna they're they're gonna allow you to play longer. And so I look at the guys who did it naturally, who are, who just had that toughness gene in them. Guys like Cal Ripken, guys like Gordie Howe or, or I mean, Brett Favre. I know he was on the, the pain pills, um, but Brett Favre, was, he, these are tough guys. These are guys who just muscled through it. Now, to put them in a world where everyone has the drugs at, the, at, the, at, their, at their fingertips, which they do anyway, but now they're going to allow it. I, I think that they, their, their special attributes, the ability to just keep showing up day after day, that we celebrate for the, and those guys right there would become less special because everyone else is on the juice and everyone can now do it. Not that everyone can do it, but you're certainly giving them the tools to be able to compete with these kind of guys who just had that innate Iron Man toughness in them. I kept them playing. I, I think those are the guys whose legacy is hurt the most. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't disagree with that. I mean, guys that like put their body on the line and um, probably played a little bit longer than they, they should have. Yeah, you know what I mean, and imagine if they would have taken steroids, they would have played even longer. And I mean, they might have had a little bit more endurance and a little bit more ability, but it probably would have just kept prolonging their career in a in a negative way, you know, a, a downhill stream. I mean, I think there's even a point like even the roids got to run out at some point, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and your numbers are still going to dwindle. Like I think of Peyton Manning, like. Considerably, I was, I was waiting for him to come up to be to be yeah. a- considerably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, right? Mm-hmm. But he had that bad neck injury, you mm-hmm. know, that, that took him out for a season. And then you saw towards the end of his career, you know, he could barely get the ball twenty five yards down the field, you know, and he didn't have the accuracy, and he certainly didn't have mobility. Now you put him on some HGH or something like that, maybe he feels a little better. Well, but, to be clear, this is we're, we talk about Peyton Manning. This is why I, I I was interested to bring him up. This is a guy who was investigated for this. It, there was reports that he was on it in 2011. There was a a, a to clinic, recover a clinic claiming they supplied him with HGH in 2011. It wasn't found out about till 2016, and so it, it was investigated. But five years after the fact, all the drugs are gone. There's really nothing to even investigate five years later. So he so, was so he was cleared. But like it doesn't change the fact there's a clinic walking around that recorded uh, secretly talking about how they were supplying him with HGH in 2011. So yeah. his, his name, while he has never proven anything, he was cleared. It is not scandal free. It is a it, he is another guy who, you know, is, is kind of under a little bit of a shroud of suspicion of, of maybe he did use also. You know what, too? I think if you are a professional athlete 
in any sense, like in any major league to around the world, I think there's always going to be a shroud that somebody is going to speculate at one yeah. point or another that you're cheating in some kind of way. So because uh, how can you be that good? No. How can you do this? How, you know, how could, how can you last that long in a game? How could you put that ball in the net or, you know, how did you have enough energy left to take that half court shot or, you know, to run through a couple guys on the field and jump over the pile into the end zone. Like everybody at some point is going to be accused of some kind of cheating. I mean, Hey, mm-hmm. but, 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 but in this scenario we posed, you can't accuse anybody of anything. You can't accuse uh, Barry Bonds of cheating because everyone's doing it. Everyone has access to the same thing. But are, are you saying they'll find some new way to cheat? So, well, so, some I'm new glad you brought that up because you know what? There's different kinds of cheating. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not just PEDs. Think about some of the different kinds of cheating, right? So we know about Belichick and Spygate, oh, Tom um, Brady and Deflategate. Don't be smirch his name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to be smirch him, right? Spygate, you know what he did after the – the 2004 2005 Super Bowl, you know, uh, he got caught just dragging the good name of Bill Belichick for the inter. Dude, the 94 Arizona State Sun Devils basketball team, point shaving. So, point shaving's huge. Tim Donaghy, you know, with the point shaving as a ref. Hey, I got a good one for you. 2000 Spanish Paralympics team, right? This team consists of 12 members, two of them were mentally disabled. <laughs> All right, think about that. Two out of the 12 members actually had a mental disability. I'm, I'm concerned about where this is going, but I'm going to... It's the out. ringer. It's the ringer. There's they, they, 10 guys, basically 10 normal athletes went out there and disgraced themselves and the Paralympians by doing it. It's the ringer. Really? It's the, car, the Carmen that, South Park episode. This happened? That's a real thing? Yeah, it really oh, happened in 2000. Ten, yeah, ten out of the twelve guys, and I'm not trying to laugh because I think it's funny. It's I'm just laughing because it's of cheating that way. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna look up. I want to know more about this. There's, there's. Yeah, you gotta look it up when we're done. You gotta, gotta, gotta look be, it up. There's books written about these lunatics. You know about Age Gate with Danny Almonte. Remember the 2001 Little League World Series? He was mm-hmm. mowing down 12 year olds with a 70 plus mile per hour fastball. Hey, he was 14. Uh, <laughs> Rosie Ruiz. Have you ever heard of Rosie Ruiz? Uh, Rosie Perez, but no. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Rosie Ruiz might have been like her ugly stepsister or something like that because she won the 1980 Boston Marathon, right? She took home the famous laurel wreath and was called the fastest woman in Boston, right? Here's the problem, though. She never ran the race from the start. She jumped, <laughs> she jumped out of the bushes from a side street a few hundred feet from the finish line and, and took it home. <laughs> Right after they found this out, right, they investigate her further because she had to qualify. Well, she qualified a year earlier in the New York Marathon doing the same thing. She just busted out on the side street <laughs> and, and got a qualifying time. I mean, people. I'm not going to lie. She might be my hero. I love that kind of that blatant <laughs> out yeah. in the open cheating of her. She has stones that need to be just appreciated. We oh, she's so great. Rosie oh. Ruiz enough. Oh, Rosie Ruiz. The best is if you see pictures of it, she's got like cops you know, putting her arms under her, like walking her down the street. Like she just basically almost died running the race. <laughs> yeah. She ran like, like a hundred feet. <laughs> give her a, give her a Boston marathon award and an Oscar. Oh my God. Yeah. She gets that. She definitely gets the Oscar for that. Uh, another famous one, dude. You gotta remember Tanya Harding of taking course. it to teammate Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. I mean, basically her ex-husband and a friend hired Shane Eckhart, the, to bash her knee in with a with a freaking baton. I mean, I mean, there's there's cheating, and there's always going to be cheating, whether or not it's drugs, or whether it's not if it's point shaving or or cheating on scorecards as a as a as a judge for a, a major UFC or boxing fight. I mean, it's crazy, but I don't know. I, I always th- when I think of I don't know when I think of the, the notorious cheaters though, those guys who just pissed hot. Get, number one's got to be Lance Armstrong. I know Gotta I was be. I was just debating this the, the the fact that we got through most of a steroid episode and didn't even bring up Lance Armstrong or mm-hmm. Bill Romanowski uh, lets you know or or even the the Russian scandal that they were recently banned from the Olympics in 2018 yeah. like we we were able to make it this far lets you know just how much how much topics how much uh, substance there is to this there is so many things so many stories oh, yeah. that we just we glossed over and left out like there is a lot here 
It's uh, historic. Like, Cheating is historic. Lance Armstrong is arguably the, the most famous cheater in American history, and we found a way to leave him out. Um, the most famous and the so single much. greatest. I mean, oh, this yeah. guy won seven straight Tour de France titles from 99 to 2005 and a bronze medal in the Olympics. Also, at 25, we all know he was diagnosed with stage three, you know, embryonal sarcoma, carcinoma or whatever, which is testicular cancer. And it was advanced. I mean, this guy beats cancer. Cancer had spread to his lymph nodes, his lungs, his brain, his abdomen, everything. I mean, this guy so overcomes cancer, dude, and then dominates, single-handedly dominates his sport more than anybody else. Like the Tiger Woods of, mm -hmm. of cycling, but, you know, and, yeah. and then the, if, if Tiger Woods actually uh, held like all the records, because Lance Armstrong did, he had the most Tour de France's. He had, you know, he had all sorts of things like that. It's true. Oh, it's true. Like, Tiger didn't have the most masters. This guy had the most. No, and, and Tiger hasn't won the most titles, you know, so far to this yeah. point in his career. But this guy holds the most. He is yeah. the top guy ever in that sport. Well, was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it just all went to shit. I mean, and, and not only that, but then Floyd Landis after him, who then basically ratted you know, him out. The, yeah, ratted him out after he won the Tour de France in 2006 and then, you know, was stripped of it, rats him out and says he was his influence. Um, yeah. I mean, well, he, he said he was uh, pressuring his whole the whole U.S. team, all his uh, the post office teams, all these old teams he was on. He was pressuring them all and supplying the drugs. Like he was the, the he was the kingpin. I believe. Yeah. What, what, what do they say here? There was a. The term drug kingpin of, of cycling. They called much. him the, the ringleader of the most sophisticated, professionalized, and successful doping program that sport has ever seen. And that was Lance Armstrong. That's not the, that's not the guy running the team. That's the, oh, that's yeah. the guy out there biking around. That's Lance Armstrong. He's My the man had some serious chemist. <laughs> like, yeah. he, I mean, he he orchestrated and, and set up a whole system around, which don't get me wrong in the dirtiest sport ever <laughs> like the, oh like the, yeah that sport was dirty everywhere you went there uh, there was a french team that had a, a car full of the, the steroids epo that got caught and pulled over and they were thrown out of like what was it a tour de france uh they, they was they were bringing in car loads of drugs like that's insane like this, this whole sport was so dirty yeah, cheat the win is is the name of the game for cycling, and it has been, you know, for for many yeah. many, many decades. Maybe yeah. Before before Lance Armstrong, the '96 Tour de France, and Bjorn Rees admits to using peds, and is told to return his uh, his first place yellow jersey. So this has yeah. been happening in cycling before Lance. Just Lance was able to. He was just the greatest to do it, you know. Yeah. So. And, uh, but, but you're you, right. got, you know, you got Ben Johnson still. We mentioned him earlier. But what about Marion Jones? We talked about her earlier about the clear. Touched right? on her. Yeah. yeah, 2000 Sydney Olympics. She gets five medals, three of them gold. Um, mm -hmm. And then she was linked to the Balco steroid scandal. And uh, she actually did jail time because she, you know, she denied it in court. And then later admitted in 2007 that she was taking the clear, the THG. Mm -hmm. Um and then she did, you know, six months in prison yeah. for perjury. So, so basically, what we're saying here is Barry Bonds was right to stick to his guns. <laughs> he avoided yeah. jail time. He did avoid jail time. And then those guys, obviously, all the the steroid guys, you know, McGuire, Palmera, Ramirez, all the big names. Ryan Braun was another one. The mm -hmm. the boys of summer, man. They, you, whenever I think of like the one sport that I remember, like some of the most rampant cheating from like the biggest names. It's gotta be baseball. Yeah. You know, I feel like you don't hear about it as much in football because guys will get like a four game suspension and you look at it and you go, okay, you know, 17 games in seasons, really 16 games in a bye week. And then they make it to the playoffs. You know, most you have another four. So you look at 20 games, I'll go eh, four games. Like, you know, they'll be back and they'll be back at top shape still. And it's not that long. It's only four weeks. I feel like you don't think of it. I mean, but football, when they, then they, they're going to suspend these guys and they're going to hit them with a hefty fine. And mm -hmm. then the next time they get caught, they're going to suspend them for more games and hit them with a hefty fine. Then they're out for a season and then they're banned for life. I think after so many, you know, you know, so many strikes against them, they're banned for life. And I think these guys kind of like know that they have a, I mean, the average football player's career is probably only three or four years, really. I know running backs, it's like an average running back's career is like three years. 
So these guys probably more than likely take it for a short amount of time in a short window in their prime. And then kind of like, I feel like lay off um, after a certain point, probably just let their career play out. You're right about basketball. I mean, you don't, you rarely hear about it because a lot of these guys are already like just top physical, you know, just physically they're, they're at the top of their game. So but baseball, there's, there's advantages there because is. of the type of sport it is. You know what I mean? So in this world where we allowed it, we've allowed the pens, um, what's the effect on the high school and collegiate athletes? Well, I'll tell you what, I think it's a big effect because they're, it's not just high school athletes that are taking it. You're talking about high school kids in general that are not athletes take performance enhancing drugs and topical creams and all that stuff to like actually like help their self image, you know what I mean? Help their body image, clear acne, stuff like that. Like it's actually really rampant in high schools, not just with athletes, but I think it's going to get a lot of these guys on the radar for colleges. Um, you know, there you're going to see a lot of guys that might have been two star recruits becoming four star recruits. You know, and those four star recruits come with notoriety. Their name comes with notoriety. I mean, when you think of certain college players and all sports, like people sometimes just draft them off their name. Oh, yeah, this guy was a four star recruit. What happened? Oh, I could get him. He was great back then. What happened? He fell off for a year. Oh, you know what? I'll get him back up. They might not be realizing like w- when he fell off, he fell off because he stopped taking drugs. I mean, look at Tony Mandarich. You know what I mean? He's the biggest mm-hmm. proponent of that. I mean, that guy basically was a college monster for like one or two seasons and then got to the pros. And then when he couldn't do it because the stricter testing and everything going on, like you just saw that he was, you know, his, his performance fell off, mm-hmm. his body changed and everything like that. I say I had the same similar thing with uh, Bosworth or another one of the guys considered one of the greatest uh, ever to play in college. Uh, gets to the NFL and you know doesn't really do a whole lot. Nope. And then gets trucked by our <laughs> boy Bo. Trucked. Still so, one of the most famous YouTube videos. <laughs> cause probably uh, sounds like because you watch it ten times a day. Oh, uh, dude, I probably I probably check on that at least a couple times a year. Every now. Yeah. All right. So before we get to our final thoughts, uh, I want to send this off to uh to to you to give us uh, our show's thank yous, our shout outs, and get our plugs all done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for those of you out there who'd like to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash Light Studios and support not only this show, but you could support our game development projects and the other Lantern Light podcast, such as Game Johns and Screen Johns. As always, thank you to our current patrons and a special thank you to the Russell James Johns support group patrons. You're all amazing and we love you. If you'd like to support just this show, you could do that by going to glow.fm slash GGMP. And let me say thank you in advance for any and all support you show us. Uh, we'd also like to send a special shout out to our Lantern Light Studios composer, Luke Mullet, for putting together our awesome new theme song for our show. If you want to hear more of Luke's works, please visit him at lukemullet.com. Um, and that's spelled L-U-K-E-M-U-L-L-E-T.com. We'd also like to thank Lantern Light Studios for allowing us to do this podcast. Without their support, none of this would be possible, of course. We'd like to thank our producer, Anthony Zagola. Zag- it's going to kill me. <laughs> for producing the show and for uh, you know all the contributions he puts into the show and on and off the air. Um, A-Z-Z-O. <laughs> We'd like to thank our audio engineer, Maria Lubanovic, for kicking ass and taking names in the editing room. As for... Uh, you and I, Alex, you could uh, visit our website, ggmppodcast.com, for more show news and notes if you want to uh, learn more about us and the show. You could also follow the show on Twitter at ggmppodcast, or you could follow Alex and I on Twitter at alexfits44 and at the kid Reno, kid spelled with two Ds, or you could follow me on Instagram as well, same name, the kid Reno, spelled with two Ds. Please hit us. Uh, please hit both of us up. Let us know what you think of our show. Let us know what we could do better. Let us know of any sports moments you like us to revisit and debate and talk about. Um, you could also visit lanternlightstudios.com for more information about our show and their other amazing podcasts, Game Jaunts with Mitch, Jack, and Riley, and Screen Jaunts with Savannah and Maria. We love these shows and highly recommend you check them out if you haven't already. Um, if you like our podcast and have enjoyed this episode, we kindly ask you to give us a five-star rating and leave a good review as it will go a long way for us to grow and improve the show for all of our listeners. And uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. Uh, We love you and we love doing it. So 
That's what I got, Alex. And we're, we're not done yet. That was impressive, though, Reno. Thanks, sir. Read no, no, no second takes, none of that stuff right there. Impressive yeah, stuff. You know what? I flub up. I just keep going. You know what I mean? AZ go. <laughs> Our producer Anthony Zicola is gonna kill me. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to, to hear. Look, how do you butcher my name? You're a fellow, you know, Italiano slash Polish. I'm not Polish. He is, but uh, you know, you, you should know how to pronounce my name. And that's apparently how he talks now. <laughs> I mean, get it all in now. He, he can't really retort right now. No, I'm just waiting for him to send me a message. On, on Slack. The time to do it. Um, all right. So looking over this right here, the whole, the whole, the whole scenario we've posed right here. So we live in a world right now where steroids are legal. Um, that's not the world we live in, but in this scenario we do. So I guess my question to you, Reno is, are we better off? with the, the way it is now or we or should, or should we look into a, a world where we say hey we can't control this anyway let's uh let's just let's stop trying to control something that we can't control what do you think well i don't think we are but if you look at the pros and cons of it like there's two sides of the argument you know the pros are like there's no more blurry line um you know mm -hmm. in baseball legalized steroids would go a, a long way towards solving the contentious issues of the hall of fame voting you know, and, uh, and, um, you know, everybody's on a level playing field and you're going to be playing at a higher level and it's, it's their lives and it's their choice. And you know what, it's going to make the great game greater, but I think we got to look at it from another standpoint. I mean, personally, I just think in, to, for me, it's, you know, I still believe in the time honored traditions of sports, you know, values, principles, to live by when playing. I mean, equality on the field or fairness of play, competing on the same level. Well, yeah, you could say, well, everybody's going to compete on the same level with steroids, but not everybody's going to take steroids. So if not every, if everyone's not going to do it, then why should anybody be allowed to do it? I mean, I think of honoring the game and those who played it before us and, you know, who will play it after us, you know, if, if you're an athlete and, uh, you know, I think of things like integrity, upholding the rules, you know, whether they're spoken or unspoken rules. So to me, solidarity, fundamentals, pushing your body to its natural limits without enhancement. This is the spirit of sport, you know, especially that we had since we were kids. You know what I mean? I fell in love with sports as a kid. I played sports as a kid and I loved it. And I played the best of my ability and I played with heart and I didn't have drugs to take to make myself better. So in the end, I, th I think like the major health concerns for these athletes and, you know, the fact that like not everybody is going to do this to their body to get ahead. I just think it's, you know, I more strict testing and more punishment and take away what these people love to do if they get caught and, and set an example. I, I, I still will always say I'm against it. Okay. Okay. So I, I got a little thing here I wanted to read here from Dr. Except Charles. Except for maybe baseball. <laughs> Sorry, right. I had that in. Maybe, Dr. maybe baseball. <laughs> Dr. Charles Yasalis, uh, professor of health policy and administration, exercise, and sports science at Penn State. He's testified before Congress multiple times about the uh, attempts to control anabolic steroids, steroids and the human growth hormone among athletes. He said, what can we do about this? Not a damn thing. Drug tests are fraught with loopholes. The money at stake is enormous. The fans don't care. It's not enough for them to watch the Olympics or any elite sporting event to see the very best. They want bigger than life people doing bigger than life things. They don't want to see an average looking guy or gal who's a gifted athlete. They want people who don't look normal. They want characters out of Marvel comics. Drugs allow that. And, and, and he's a, this is a guy who's been trying to fight this saying that he, he's acknowledging the futility of the whole, of the whole fight. But because of the futility, um, just but, let, it let it be. But in the end, I, I thought I would fall on, on the side of him here. But in the end, after doing the research for the past few days, I ended up uh, softening my stance. I end up on the, the 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 soft little weak side that you're on here, Reno. I'm on your <laughs> side. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I wanted I wanted to come out of this and go let steroids reign, let the players do what they want. But I, but I think I see the benefits to the uh, to the youth. You don't want to encourage the a uh, high school kid that he has to get on steroids to make it. Um, we, we need to at least keep that pretense going because it's going to prevent some kids from using it. And that's you know, while there's, there's health benefits to some of it, it is when it's prescribed by a doctor. Um, there's too much risks associated when you start doing it on your own. 
Um, so I will allow for sports to continue to uh, to abolish PEDs. Now, however, you want to do them on your own personal time. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Well, um, hey, so I'll tell you what, Alex. I have I have two kids. You know what I mean, and they grow up. They you know, and they play sports. If they want to play sports, I'm not going to force them into anything. But I'm going to you know, always just love them and support anything they do. But if they play sports, if I found out my son or daughter were like taking roids or anything like that as a high school kid to get an edge, to get ahead, knowing what it does to their body, damaging their body, damaging their brain, you know, going to be harmful for them later in life, I would just be devastated. I'd be demoralized. And that's why it's like, if you're going to do it for the sum of, you know, of the, of the few, you should do it for the, the whole of the many. And I, I just think to myself, like, th- is that doctor right? Do people really not care? Do, do you feel like people don't care? Like, I care. I think fans like, don't I, care. When well, we watch them uh, clap like trained seals every time McGuire hit a home run out of the park. Yeah, and but we, then when I, we I, found I, out about it afterwards, did you not care a little bit? Did you go, oh, well, well. Did you I go, mean, oh, well, or it, did you go, ooh? It looks, it looks ooh. bad now, but, I mean, we also – it's the same fans that elected Sean Merriman to the uh, the Pro Bowl. The same. It's the same year he was suspended for PEDs. Yeah, like, like I, clearly, the fans don't really care. <laughs> like they just don't. I, uh, maybe, on a high maybe level, maybe a majority. You know, maybe a majority. Like you said, on a high level. I, I, I think. I think you. I think you don't care when they're on your team. I think that's the reality. I mean, if they're your, if they're the the rival team, I think you care more. I think if one of our own guys does it, you can kind of look aside, forgive them, especially if the guy you pass. like. Turn yep. a blind eye. Turn yeah, the he's the guy you got in your fantasy football team. You're going to give him a little, little extra pass there. You know um, what, though? To give you a little perspective on me, like, you're right. You're probably right. And the doctor's probably right. A majority of fans, like, they look at sports as just they want to be entertained. They want to be entertained. Think about that old Russell Crowe from, you know, uh, Maximus from uh, Gladiator. <laughs> you know, Are you not entertained? You know what I mean? Like uh, they want to maybe. That's, that's your that's second that's impression it. of the show. <laughs> it's not. Uh, no, I'm not going to do Russell Crowe. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, maybe a majority of people just want to have mindless entertainment. They just want to, just whatever, man. Shut up and throw the ball. I don't care how bad you're juicing. But for somebody like you, I would think somebody like you. I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but for somebody like me who grew up playing sports and watching sports and like dedicating his life to sports and loving sports and just. Oh my God. Like, you know what I mean? And ingraining that my, like my whole life around my friends, family, everything It's always, there's always sports in my life. Like, I just think like, for, I love Brian Dawkins, you know, again, I know another Eagle, but <laughs> another Philly, but I love Brian Dawkins. And to me, he's like the epitome of, of like the, the, like a, of an incredible human being and a, and a man of God and a, an incredible athlete, like a talented, like an unbelievably talented athlete, a guy who's like multifaceted, did it all, did it the right way, right? He was the Wolverine on the field, but he's like a gentleman off the field. If I found out he was taking performance enhancing drugs, I, my life would be like shattered. Like I, I'd live, <laughs> I would, I would live, I'd still breathe and walk. But you'd be a, a shell of your, a, a but, shell of yourself walking around. I would. I'd be like a ghost walking outside my body. I'd, I'd be devastated. I honestly like. Food like you know, chocolate would taste <laughs> less sweet. Steak would be less juicy. The air I breathe would just you know. I'd be like you know what? I hope this is nitrogen. I just s- slowly die. Like I'd be devastated. I would be just. I, I, it would be yeah. It would be say it ain't so. I would All do right. say it ain't so, doc. Say it ain't so. Like that's me. And I hope there's other you know fans like that out there i hope we're not just this silent minority of fans like i hope there's more people that, that do look at the mcguires and stuff and go damn it man god damn it like man i believed in you i loved what you were doing then i find out you cheated like that's why bonds like i don't get it i saw little barry bonds banging home runs banging shots you know what i mean putting up huge numbers having a great right. average. So, so you're talking barry bonds again let's let's, let's wrap this whole thing up yeah. What's the moment? What's the or the one person or thought that comes to your mind when I first say to you, performance enhancing drugs? Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Okay. Yeah, because uh, of what he overcame, all the like the story, like this guy beat fucking cancer, dude. Not how many people? Not many people beat stage three, stage four. Cancer. Yeah, stage stage four. Yeah. Yeah, this dude beat that shit. He dude, he rolled that shit up in a fucking burrito and ate that shit with some fucking mustard and some fucking asbestos. He killed that shit. He was like, yo, I don't fuck fuck cancer. Cancer ain't taking me. And then went on and dominated his sport 
and then basically I mean, I mean, and ended up he was the bad guy bitched out on he was Oprah, the, like yeah he was he was the bad guy and that was the big turn it was the big heel turn this guy was the all-american beaten cancer beaten all the europeans like this guy was beloved everyone with their yellow bracelets uh they had lance strong live strong yeah, yeah. Live strong, right and like yeah and, and then for him to be the bad guy for him not to just be the bad, to be the ringleader the godfather he was the ultimate bad guy in doping it really yeah. is and, 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 and I, I agree with you he's i thought about like oh the home run race the mitchell report the bonds can but it's armstrong armstrong's it's armstrong. the guy Biggest I'm, slap in the face. And, and we let him go almost unscathed through this whole episode. And it, like, yeah. we almost let him get away with it. Well, you know what? Fuck you, Lance Armstrong, <laughs> for slapping every man, woman, child, fucking dog, cat, everybody in the face. You heard it here fucking first. It. <laughs> this Fuck has you, been man. one of the greatest games never played. Go B-Doc. Go B-Doc. <laughs>